Good evening and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. Um, I'd ask at this point everybody turn off their cell phones so they don't interfere with our RF feed on our mics and out to the TV land. And uh, if everybody would stand to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to start our meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Moving into our agenda, I'd ask the secretary to call the roll. Gladly, uh, President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker. Here. Secretary Kaminsky, myself, here. Treasurer Brandstant. Here. Member Gordon. Here. And Member McFarland. Here. President accounted for. Uh, first item on the agenda is our consent agenda of two items 2.1 to 2.5. Uh, that's in the agenda if people want more detail. It's approval of our last meeting's minutes, uh, a list of folks who have announced their resignation dates of our employees, uh, people who are recommending for hiring, uh, some textbooks that were presented for 30-day examination period on August 26 for approval, and approval of the school's bills for July and August. Uh, any questions and or deletions or additions to the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll move to approve items 2.1 through 2.5B as identified in the agenda. Support. Moved by Member McFarland, support by Treasurer Brandstad. Any other further discussion? Seeing none, moving a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. At this point, we move into the period of time to request uh, to, to address the board. We have no formal request this evening, but anybody else care to address the board? Seeing none, we'll move on to Board of Education matters and presentations of the board. I'll turn it over to Mr. Sherrill. We have our um, first time we'll be honoring some employees called Shining Star Award. And so this will be new to all of you as well as new to the audience. And traditionally what I've done when we've done these is uh, um, read a little bit about them, have them come up, present them an award, and then have them shake your hands and we honor that person going forward. And the first person is Terry Gay. Um, this is what Terry's history has. Terry began his employment with Midland Public Schools on February 15th of 1988, just over 25 years ago as a cleaning custodian. Less than a year later, Terry moved into the MPS Carpentry Apprenticeship Program and on February 15th, 1994, Terry received the Certificate of Completion of Apprenticeship from the Bureau of Apprenticeship and Training with the United States Department of Labor. Since that time, Terry has been a trade contractor with Midland Public Schools. During his time in this position, Terry has built a Built, reconfigured, installed, uninstalled, all things wood as well as bleachers, playground equipment, and more. <laughs> year after year, Terry's performance appraisal reflects his excellent carpentry skills and quality workmanship, as well as respect for and the interest of all aspects of the care and maintenance of Midland Public Schools, buildings, and equipment. Terry was nominated for the Shining Star by Bridget Hockmeyer, principal of Plymouth Elementary. Among her comments, Bridget wrote, he creatively problem solved and utilized storage units from a closed building, recycling them into space storage at Plymouth. Terry's work ethic and determination to provide staff and students space at Plymouth is duly noted. His thinking and ability to, to build is greatly appreciated and should be recognized. Terry, if you'd come forward, please. <laughs> we have a certificate for you and a gift. Thank you. Shake your hand. Terry, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Terry, thank you very much. You got the first one. And our second employer we recognize tonight, one of our teachers, Lisa Howman. Lisa began her career with Midland Public Schools on August 21st, 1992, just over 21 years ago, as a member of the special education staff at Midland High School. While at Millen High, Lisa taught any number of courses from language arts to environmental science to food service and even vocational courses at the community center. For the 2001-2002 school year, Ms. Howman's job assignment took a slight turn. She moved to teaching special education for kindergarten through fifth grade students at Plymouth Elementary. For the 2007-2008 school year, <coughs> I lost my spot here, Lisa's career took yet another jog, which is but she continues into her current assignment. She is the ICT facilita facilitator at both Plymouth and Seabird Elementary Schools. 
in this role, Lisa works with staff members using the ICT problem solving model to listen to teacher concerns, brainstorm ideas, develop strategies, and evaluate intervention effectiveness. And in performance appraisals, Ms. Hammond's supervisors reflect Lisa is a true leader of innovation for our staff as she keeps us up to date on research based methods for student success. Lisa's contributions are appreciated by the staff administration at Plymouth and Seabirch. She's extremely valuable, professional at both buildings. Lisa holds a bachelor's degree from Burling Green State University in elementary education and special education, as well as a master's degree from Bowling Green State University in special education. She is constantly looking for opportunities for professional growth, from attending courses and workshops to increasing her knowledge of opportunity services provided by the community agency for her students and families. Lisa was nominated for the Shining Star by Susan Johnson, principal of Seabird Elementary. Among her comments, Susan wrote, Lisa's always a thoughtful professional, always looking to help students, staff, and parents. This summer before school started, Lisa volunteered her time to assist with assessing our incoming kindergarten students. Lisa, if you come forward, please. Yeah. <laughs> I graduated from Ohio State, if I can get on your good side. <laughs> so very nice to recognize two of our employees. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Lisa, for everything you do for us right off the top. I'll turn it uh, back to Mike. We have another presentation for you tonight. We have uh, I'm probably going to murder Corey's last name. Corey, you want to help me with that? Yes, it's Pablo. Okay, and Corey's a welding teacher at Millennium High School, and he's going to do the presentation tonight. Oop. I'm going to have to weld that. <laughs> Good evening. It's not strong enough the stuff he works with. <laughs> First of all, I have to tell you, it's, it's an honor to be able to come share with you a little bit about my program. Um, I've worked pretty hard in the last three years to build it into what it is today, and um, I'm going to share a little bit about that with you. Um, okay, so as I said, my name is Corey Pavlak. Uh, this is my third year teaching with Midland Public Schools. Um, this is something I always stress is that it's Midland Public Schools welding program, uh, not Midland High School's welding program, because although it is held at Midland High School, I do have Dow High students as well. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and then I'll introduce two of my students who have come to speak with me today, and they're going to help me tell you a little bit about it. <laughs> I don't know how to fix that. Oh, there, there we go. go. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, the classes that we offer. Um, we offer four different classes, and we're going to, my students are going to talk to you a little bit more in detail about each one of the classes, uh, but they are listed up here, Hobby and Art Welding, Weld Tech 1, Weld Tech 2, and Weld Tech 3. So opportunity to take welding all four years of high school. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is competitions that we compete in. Um, that's something that um, I feel pretty strongly about. I think it's very important, and the kids seem to get you know a, quite a sense of pride out of it. Um, a lot of the students that I have, this is this is the only thing they're recognized for in their high school high school career. So it means a lot to them, and it means a lot to me to be able to help them through that. So. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is introduce Connor McLaren to you, and he's going to talk about uh, the first couple classes that we have and a couple competitions, and then we will come on back. Come on up, Karen. Connor. Excuse me. I, uh, as he said, my name is Connor McLaren. Um, I started welding in 10th grade, um, and I went uh, right into welding tech one. Um, but I'm going to talk about hobby and art welding first. Um, it's really an introductory course. I should probably change the slide. There we go. Um, it's an introductory course. Uh, you don't uh, go very far in depth. Um, you start, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, it's <sighs> it is. How long is the class? Um, it's a 
I'm, so, I'm sorry about this. Uh, it's a one semester class, um, so the kids that take it, uh, they get uh, uh, some time to fill in their ele other elective classes. If they take it as a, uh, as a freshman, they can take their, um, I think it's their required phys ed and uh, the other classes that they're required to take. Um, after you take uh, hobby and art welding, uh, you take Weld Tech 1. Um, and in Weld Tech 1, uh, it's a lot more in depth than hobby and art, but not as in depth as Weld Tech 2 or 3. Um, you, uh, you cover more welding processes. Uh, and in hobby and art, it's primarily uh, gas metal, sorry, shielded metal arc welding. Um, and that is uh, basically the only thing you do in hobby and art. But in Welding Tech 2, sorry, Welding Tech 1, you have the uh, two semesters. Um, and the first semester is uh, primarily for shielded metal arc welding. Then in the second semester, you go into gas metal arc welding. Um, that's known as MIG. That's uh, a different process that you learn, um, you know, again, in the second semester. Um, you do your uh, different joints. You've got uh, bead, lap, T, and butt joints. And you do uh, all four of those in the four welding positions, flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. Um, so again, a lot more uh, in depth. Hobby and art welding, you only do, you do your four uh, main joints, but you only do them in the flat position because you only have, you know, the first semester to work on it. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to pass the torch to Justin Tenbush, who's going to talk to you about the more advanced. Can I have a question real quick? Is yeah. it is it like a one hour class, or is um, it how many hours with, a day do you meet? With welding tech one, that's one hour a day. Okay. Um, hobby and art is also one hour a day. Okay. Um, the more advanced classes, like welding tech two or three, those are two hours a day. Okay. But you can take weld tech two as a one hour a day okay. class. So here's Justin. Hi, my name is Justin. I'm a senior at Midland High. Go Chemex. Uh, I started welding in 10th grade, and like Connor, I went right into the Weld Tech 1 program. I proceeded on then to Weld Tech 2, and now I'm taking Weld Tech 3 as a senior. So I'm going to start out talking about Weld Tech 2. And as Connor said, in Weld Tech 1, you learn the shielded metal arc, also known as stick. You learn the uh, gas metal arc, known as MIG. And then in Weld Tech 2, you learn another process called gas tungsten arc welding, which is known as TIG welding. And the benefit of learning TIG welding is you get to work on different alloys of metal, such as aluminum. And you get to apply some of the science knowledge you learned, because you have to turn up the voltage, because the heat transfers faster through aluminum. So you get to apply your other classes. You start out by building your prior knowledge uh, in Weld Tech 1. You start out doing the same joints in the easy positions. And then as you move on, you go into different positions. And then eventually, you start doing those different uh, positions with gas tungsten arc welding, which you didn't get to do in Weld Tech 1. And Weld Tech 3 is the next course offered. And this can actually either be taken at Midland High School, or it can be taken at Delta College. When you take it at Delta College, you actually earn college credit in high school, which I'm currently enrolled at Delta College right now. So I'm earning, I believe it's 16 credits as that I get to go into college with that other students don't. So I get the edge on them by taking this um, class. And another thing we have that we get to work with in Weld Tech 3 and Weld Tech 2 that we um, put a lot of time getting this together is a CNC plasma cam. And you get to design projects and then the plasma cam actually cuts them out, cuts the metal out for you and very, you can do intricate designs or you can go as simple as a square and make a box. Or uh, you'll see a picture later, a guy actually cut out um, like a picture of a forest and then made it into a table. Mm. And so you get to apply some math skills by you know adding and subtracting side lengths to make what you want to make. And then the difference that I've noticed at Delta College is it's a lot more of a mature environment. It really prepares you for what you're going to go into in the next years and further on into the work environment. And next, Connor's going to come back up to talk about some of the competitions we do. So the uh, first competition I'm going to talk about is MITES. Um, it stands for Michigan Industrial Technology and Education Society. Um, and that competition is uh, like a project competition. You, um, you do these projects in your, 
in your home environment, like they're not your not your house at your at your shop. Um, it is not in house. Uh, the other competitions, you go to the place and do your welds there. Um, but this is for projects and um, you know, just things students work on. Um, here, this picture, um, sorry about that, is uh, all of our uh, people that submitted stuff last year. Um, and that is mostly high schools compete in that. Um, the other competitions, uh, there are a lot of career centers. So this is one that we really uh, uh, excel in because we've got a, a group of creative students um, and we usually clean up too <laughs> didn't know if you know that um, you know in regionals if we don't win if we win second it's because another person in the program got first um, <laughs> so yeah um, I like I like this competition <laughs> what, what kind of can you go yeah. back there? I, I can only see what looks like a well, trailer. Um, what kind yeah. of projects do you guys build? Uh, Nick, that's Nick Keel. Um, he graduated last year. He made that trailer for his quad. Um, then you know you make tables. That table he was telling you about with the forest um, in front of the red uh, car there. Um, he made that table. Cut out. Uh, it's got a Kodiak bear um, in some in the forest with some uh, you know footprints or whatever. And then he layered plexiglass around it. Um, to the far right, uh, John Nurnberg made a mirror um, for one of his lady friends. Um, I, uh, I'm kneeling down there in the front, and uh, I, I made a, a metal rose also for a lady friend. <laughs> um, you know, uh, we have uh, uh, Matt Clark there standing in front of the car. He made a brush guard for that truck of his, um, and that turned out well. Uh, the next competition is... Skills USA, uh, and that is at Delta, um, and you take three people from your uh, your group, and there are three people per uh, category. And the categories that we do there are shielded metal arc welding, which is stick welding, gas metal arc welding, which is MIG, tungsten arc weld. No, what did I do? Okay, gas tungsten arc welding, and oxyacetylene welding, and then all around, um, and when you do that, there are, like I said when I was talking about the mites, uh, that's mainly career centers um, and like Bay, Bay Aranac, excuse me. Um, and they, you know, they do it all day. And so we're in a high school and we only do it for at, at most two hours a day. Um, so we go there, but our best competition is the mites competition. Let's just put it like that. Um, so, and it, it helps you for the uh, the work environment because when you go into a job or you have to take a welding certification test, so that when you when you want to get a job at say you wanted to be a pipe fitter at Dow, um, they give you a test where you have to you just have to pass it and you only get one chance where you have to you could reapply, um, but you only get one chance. So it prepares you for the working environment because it you know. Uh, provides the pressure that you would need, um, you know, so it, it helps you uh, perform under pressure and stuff like that. Um, I think, oh, print reading. Um, that goes along with these competitions too because you, um, they don't tell you exactly how you're supposed to weld, well, they tell you how, it's just in print form, not in words. So if you were the all around person, you would have to know how to read these prints so that you'd do the weld right. Uh, and you know, if you want to win first, you got to do the weld right. So, you have to be able to read the prints, um, and sometimes their prints won't be. You know, they won't say gas metal arc welding in you know this corner on a weld, and then go from bottom to top or top to bottom. It'll just say or what position you're supposed to do it in flat, vertical, horizontal, or overhead. Um, so you have to know how to read these prints, and it is a it's a good way to prepare yourself if you're going into the work. You know, the field. Um, like I am, and I found that pretty helpful. So I'm going to pass the torch back to Justin, so he's going to talk about uh, two more welding competitions. All right, we got two more competitions to talk about. The next one is the Delta College STS competition, and this co this competition uh, is a, it's a pretty good mixture of career centers and high schools. And like Connor said, uh, one of the most vital things is you have to be able to read the print. 
because it's not going to say point and arrow, say this is a stick weld and you need to do it in flat. It's going to say uh, GMAW 3G and then the specifications. And especially if you have to do an intermittent weld, which is a chunk of weld here, a chunk of weld here, and a chunk of weld here, you have to be able to do the math to say, all right, this is an inch and a half on center away from this one, which is four and a half inches on center. And then, like I said, it goes back to performing under pressure because, you know, you know, if you prepare for two months and then you have one chance to do the weld, you really be, have to be able to come through in that clutch moment to bring your school first place. And then the next competition we went to, we got a nice picture there, is the competition over at Ferris. Uh, this is the Ferris University Secondary Welding Competition. And this one is um, cool because you get to go to Ferris, which is uh, one of the leading welding engineering schools in Michigan, and you get to uh, see how their shop works. You actually get to run the machines. You get to meet the professors and talk with them. And this is one of the more advanced welding competitions. You, you have to do more difficult welds. You have to do more than one weld. You have to combine welds together. You have, um, this one's mostly career centers. I think last, when we went last year, we were the only high school there, and we took five kids, and you only get to take one person per category. And um, I was considering going to Ferris at the time, and I actually already applied. And so that was one of the big things that, you know, solidified me going to Ferris was finding out how their welding shop works, how they run their program. And so that was a really good experience. And now we're going to go back to Mr. Pavlock. Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you guys for coming up and uh, talking about the program with me. Um, ultimately, I think it's them that you want to hear from, not me. I can tell you, you know, whatever I want about the program, but they are the end product. So, a um, couple things that I wanted to touch on, uh, these competitions that, you know, that we have been participating in. Um, since I've started, you know, as Connor alluded to, we do really well at the Mites competition. Uh, this year at regionals, every project we took um, got first place, unless it got a second place, you know, from one of our students getting first. Uh, and then in, at the state level, um, it was six out of eight were uh, top ten. So, um, again, one that we're, we're really proud of. We do a nice job there. Uh, the Skills USA competition, uh, it's been two years since we had someone make it to the state level, but we have been there. Um, the Ferris competition, we have yet to... Uh, We've yet to make it, so hopefully this year, uh, trying to get a little, little more credit for Midland here. But uh, the Delta College STS competition that Justin talked about, he actually won first place at that last year. I don't know if he brought that up or not. i a little modest over here. But uh, so great things going on. Um, real quick, I want to talk to you about articulation. Uh, students who are completers of my program, they go through um, WellTech 1 and WellTech 2. Uh, they can earn up to 12 college credits at Delta. Um, we are just implementing now getting credits from uh, Ferris State University as well. Um, but the, the Delta thing is something that we do every year. Um, so I don't know how familiar you are with the, uh, the cost of tuition at Delta College, but it's about 100 bucks a credit hour. So that's $1,200 my students save every year um, just from going through our program. And then in Justin's case, where he's a Weld Tech 3 student at Delta College, uh, he goes there in the morning instead of going to first and second hour and he gets an additional 16 credit hours, and those are, those are not the same ones that, you know, the, the 12 that he already articulates. So he'll have 28 uh, credit hours done at Delta College before he graduates high school. So um, nice. just a great program, you know, almost $3,000. So um, the other thing, just current events I wanted to tell you about, actually last week uh, we took a field trip, just my advanced students, to Ferris State University. Uh, the reason we went there is Miller. Uh, Miller is a welding company. Um, all of our welding equipment in our shop is all Miller brand, and uh, they have what they call a Miller productivity tour. They have a semi, <coughs> excuse me, they have a semi and the whole side of it opens up <coughs> and you have all this welding equipment in the side of it and the students basically get to go play with all the most modern technology that uh, Miller has to offer. Um, the kids absolutely love it. Then they pull us inside the semi, they have a little classroom set up in there, and they just talk to us about welding careers, um, what you have to do to get there, and then, since it's conveniently located in Ferris's parking lot, they kind of scoop us inside and we get a little tour of Ferris's shop as well. So um, while I was there, I got to see four Midland High graduates uh, just since I've started um, that are in the welding engineering and the manufacturing program there. So it was uh, pretty exciting. So um, do we have any, any questions? I, I have one. Yes. 
Uh, of the 28 credits that Justin is going to earn, are those going to be able to transfer to Ferris, or are they going to just stay with Delta? Yep, Ferris has a special program where they take uh, people who have earned the associate's degree from Delta, um, and they, they take them and roll them into their welding engineering bachelor's degree at Ferris. Okay. So that will be transferable. Great. Yes, sir. As, as a chemical engineer, I've worked in manufacturing for Dow for years. Do you have any kids in the program that are aspiring to go get a BS in other kind of engineering at other universities? Yes, one of my graduates is in um, the manufacturing engineering technology. Then I have, we have the welding engineering technology. And I think, I'll, I have a mechanical engineer as well. Okay. I can't advocate strongly enough for, for, for our students who are thinking of those, even like a chemical engineer, right. to take some welding uh, and understand welding technology at least from a base standpoint, have some base skills, it's always very useful in the workplace. Do you have a lot of students that choose not to take the classes, the Tech 3 at Delta, and instead stay here at Midland? Yes, actually, that's a really uh, good what question. What is the factor in determining that, um, or, or from their perspective? One thing is, if students don't feel they're ready, um, they haven't learned everything that they can get from Midland High School, they're not ready to get into the college setting. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, it is things like transportation and stuff like that. But um, I think typically it's, you know, they're not ready to go yet. And with WellTech 3 at Delta, there's a very limited number of spaces because Delta has set up this program with all the surrounding high schools. So I can really only send two students per year to that program. Okay. So you, you, have to, you have to earn it. You have to be ready and you have to be ready to represent Midland. And that's a decision that you make? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. It's, it's actually between me and the counselors, a few other people. but. Yeah, it's ultimately, ultimately Great. comes down to us. Any other questions? Uh, roughly how many students take a welding related class and, or like a percent of high school? And then uh, how many of them go on into some related field that your, your class, the competitions and inspires them to go on into some related field like that? That's a good question. Um, I see about 100 students a day. And um, of those, I don't have a really good percentage for you. Okay. Um, I, I try and keep in contact with a lot of my former students um, and I, I mean I can give you names of specific ones and that are still in the field um, mm -hmm. but unfortunately just with only only been here three years I don't really have a good uh, a good number for you yet. Mm -hmm. okay. is, is there something you can do without going on yes, at the collegiate um, level with what they've learned from here? Are they able to get into some type of apprenticeship program or something like that? With Absolutely. I have a student who just stopped by to see me last week, and he's in an apprenticeship program at Three Rivers. Okay. Um, he said most of the time he doesn't really get to weld yet because he's kind of earning his stripes, so he does a lot of grinding and prep work for mm -hmm. the welders. Um, but again, an example of someone who didn't want to continue mm -hmm. their education, they just wanted to jump right into the field. Um, and that's, you know, it, it depends on the employer. Uh, a lot of cases they can do on-the-job training. Um, you know, unless you're getting into the engineering and things like mm -hmm. that, then you, of course, need to continue your education. You're talking about kids that graduate, right? From, from high school and don't want to go on to Ferris and get an right. engineering okay. type yeah. degree, you know, that we're giving them the skills in high school to... Yeah, and actually, trades. as it stands right now, more of my students are working in the field without continuing their education. Mm -hmm. um, because I've only been here a short amount of time, the ones that I do have are, are still in school. So, so are you their go-to guy for placement? The graduates, they they graduate and they say, "Hey, look, I don't want to go to college. I want to, you know, go somewhere locally." Um, do you they, have the connections for them, or is there a, a placement service that they use? Students have used me as a resource. Um, we're fortunate enough to have uh, one of the teachers in our building um, is related to someone uh, in the field <laughs> that really helps. Uh, we take field trips there. Um, they donate stuff to us. That's a great relationship we have with that company. Um, I know some people in the industry in the area. I'm, I'm fairly new to Midland immediately, but um, then I can also, I, I can send them to people. But what I've been really impressed with is the relationships that students of mine have built with, say for example, the instructors at Delta College. Just in that short time we see them at the competitions, it's like they, they really build a relationship with them. They go back to them and say, hey, remember me? I, I won that competition. You know anybody looking for a welder? So that's, that's, that's really impressed me, and, and just how quick those relationships build with the instructors at the college level. Okay. Well, in recent years, Corey, I've read that welding, there's a strong need for welding and welding engineering. Do you see that 
down the road for, for your students and uh, it's a growing field or a Absolutely. field with demand? Um, it, it really helps to have Dow and Dow Corning um, right in our backyard here as far as students who want to stay local. But if students want to travel, I, you, can, you can name your price. I mean, to be a pipe welder and, be a, you know, and want to travel, you can name your price, you can go anywhere. Um, Texas is huge right now. A lot of places mm -hmm. out west are just, I mean, they're dying for welders. It's, it, you know, the, the placement out of Ferris with the welding engineering, um, first year out of college, $75,000. I mean, it's, it, they're waiting for them. Most, most students from that program are, are hired before they graduate. I see Justin smiling back there. <laughs> 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 Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll turn it back to, to Mike for a uh, policy manual. So we've talked about the Neola policy for a while. My understanding you've been working with Neola since 2011, and now we're going to bring it to you for uh, information review. Um, you have the table of contents in your packet. The entire document's on Cindy's desk. <laughs> There's no way of attaching that um, piece to it. You, we're going to ask for, uh, next month that you uh, approve it, and then we can t begin to take it through the committee structure. <laughs> And we're going to try to get that on a searchable database as well on the website to make that more usable. Okay. okay. I urge board members to come in and more than pre-use it. <laughs> Go a little depth. And uh, at this point, we'll turn it over to Dave Youngstrom from Yo and Yo on our annual audit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're already more entertaining than Mari was. He threw a joke his first line. A joke? Oh, come on. <laughs> Mari's doing well. Somebody's concerned. Here. She's back working with us part time, just doing some detailed reviews, so just so uh, she can't get, get, give it up quite yet. Well, as you mentioned, uh, my name is Dave Youngstrom, and on behalf of Yo and Yo, I'm really pleased to be presenting your audit for the first time for me. The firm has been with you guys a number of years, but it was my first audit with the district, and I think it went. Uh, quite well, uh, amazingly well. We were done really with the audit by the first part of August and we really had to wait to the committee meetings to, to present. We were borderline were done before Labor Day. So it really speaks to the uh, effort of the staff and what goes on with that. But um, With that, I guess I want to start talking about the results. You have th several documents in front of you, an audit report, a long, big, thick blue binder, a single audit report, which is an audit of federal compliance and our federal awards, and it was, as well as a communication letter. So yeah, I have those, but I have it all in summary format in the presentation that I'm going to cover on. If something comes up after the fact, please feel free to call me. My number's on here, contact information if something's not quite addressed in, in the presentation. I know I want to be brief. So um, the first thing I want to talk about this year is we did implement some new standards this year. So some of the terminology may have changed, and I'll point those out in the presentation as we go. The first one is we are issuing an unmodified opinion on the financial statements, which means there are no modifications to the financial statements that are properly reported. There were no journal entries during the audit this year. So everything you're seeing on a monthly basis is what you're seeing in the audit report. So that's good, and that's what you're looking for is unmodified. So that's a new terminology that used to be unqualified and had some explaining to do. But unmodified is what you want. There's no modifications. So let's take a look at the, uh, the balance sheet um, as of June 30th. We did implement GASB 63 and 65 this year, which are really talking about deferred inflows. And that just is a, a, the only reason I pointed out is it changes the names on your statements and it's something you might look at from one year to the next. And where you used to have assets, liabilities, and fund balance, now you have uh, assets, liabilities, deferred inflows, and fund balance. And I'll just talk a little bit about that. But uh, the first thing here is your assets and your general fund and your other funds all combined. Um, you have $19 million in assets. Um, over 10 million of that is money owed to us from the state of Michigan and federal funds for money we've already spent. So we're in arrears on that for about $10 million. The rest is in, the b big part of that is in cash at about $8.3 million, which is down from the prior year by $1.1. Um, the other funds were down about $800,000 in total assets this year. Um, liabilities uh, were down uh, pretty, pretty even compared to last year. What we moved out of the liabilities was a deferred inflow this year. We had mostly some pledges receivable that were pledged to us for certain programs that we weren't received within 60 days and have to be set up as a deferred inflow. So that just kind of explains that, and that's the reason I spent some time on this because it's just a little bit new. 
and the rest is your you know total liabilities, deferred inflows of resource, and fund balance. Your operating statement, your statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. Um, the general fund spent over two million dollars more than it took <coughs> in this year, um, dropping your fund balance from about thirteen point two to eleven point one. So another shortfall absorbed by the savings account and I know it's no surprise and that's what the budget is but again it's a, a big number and a big chunk of change we'll talk about where we spent those dollars in a few minutes um, our other funds you can see we had took in 2.1 million um, just under 2.7 in expenditures and that was really the spend down most of the capital projects in the sinking fund and a couple of the other funds as well but most of that was in those areas as well as a little bit in the bookstore spent down some funds the general fund overall taking a look at our uh, final budget to our actual um, 77.6 million of revenues 77 just over 77 million in actual a difference of 0.7 percent expenditures 80 point just over 80 million 70.2 million down one percent uh, a net difference of about 275,000 which is really only a half a per half a one percent of variance less than that um, and the biggest piece of that really was uh, federal grants that we did not spend so we didn't we didn't incur the cost so we didn't get the revenue that's the biggest change there and those monies will be spent in the future and carried over one more look at revenue uh, taking a look current year to prior year uh, revenues dropped about 3.6 million dollars um, I guess on the good side local revenues were up 1.2 million uh, state revenues were down about 2.7 and then interdistrict was up about 600,000 and our federal dollars were decreased. Some of that era money was gone, had completely gone away now. And that was down about $400,000. So overall, we, we spent 1.3 million a year ago and just under 2.1 this year. Look at the pie chart of revenues. Uh, taking the, big, the largest piece, obviously the state share, 65% um, this year, um, down 2% last of the total. Local did pick up 2% of that, up up 2% to 27 and then federal was down 1% and the interdistrict for we get some additional special ed money from the state I think it was of uh, interdistrict money was up about 1% so kind of a little shift between state and local again as property taxes come up a little bit we collect a little bit more of that money locally and the state has pays less and that's down quite a bit you can take a look at this line chart here the stack chart just kind of shows you the trend where you pre-proposal a there in 1995 and then you can see slowly the decline of revenues, which again is no surprise to anybody in the room that we've been challenged with revenues, uh, not only in Midland, but everywhere around the state. Um, just a big thing to point out, in 2012, you see an orange piece in the top of that. We had a large capital outlay uh, that year uh, that we had uh, issued some proceeds for capital leases last year, and that just made that 1.7, and then we didn't do that this year. Um, the interdistrict, I said, was up about from 5.2 million from 4.6, again, special ed. And then the local, you can see 1.2 and down the 2.7. Taking a look where we spend our money, um, probably notice some, no one's surprised. We, uh, we are just spending 85% of every dollar on our employees. 80, 85 cents of every dollar we get in goes out to our employees. And that's up 2% from the prior year. Mm -hmm. uh, purchase services remain the same as in supplies and materials at about 5%. Um, other other, ca other non-categorized, about 3 And our capital outlay did drop by about 2%. So this shift really was that we, we spent more on our uh, employees and less in capital outlay this year as a percentage of the total. And again, just the, the stack uh, line chart or bar chart here. And it's a very subtle decline there. Um, again, overall down a half a million dollars in other um, instruction was down quite a bit at 1.4 and the support was pretty flat, just down slightly in our spending from this year. This is this is a slide I always like to talk about again because it shows you kind of the, where you're where you've been and where you're where you're hoping to be I guess and where you want to be down the road. Um, two of the last three years, our revenue's been short of our expenditures, and three out of the last four, um, we've been underspending the spending more than we take in. And the budget for 14 is consistent with consistent with that. Uh, looking forward too. Um, we'll talk about what's left in the next slide, but I could just kind of—it's nice to see this on a on a line chart. So you can see kind of where you're at and how the gaps, um, how you know we see the big numbers and all that stuff. But when you start seeing it in a in a visual like that, what's left is your savings account, all you have left, um, and once it's gone, it's hard to get back in there, as we all know. 
Um, if you take your total fund balance, divide it by your total expenditures, you have about 14%. Uh, the states just, uh, I don't know if they've issued that yet, but the green districts are supposed to be 15% in, in the new, I don't know, it's in committee right now, but that's the, the theory of the rating system, so we're going to be below that, um, which really leaves you with 55 days of operations. Now, if you back out the restricted amounts, it gets you down to $10.2 million, which is 12.9%, mm. or 47 days. Month and a half, you can operate without any revenues. So it offers a lot of challenges, you know, and um, it's, it's definitely not easy. I share some of your pain and some of the decisions you make. They're not easy. Um, it's easy to say the numbers matter, all, and that's all that matters, but it's kids in classrooms, and that's what we're up against sometimes. So that's the financial piece, and I'll quickly go over some other slides. If there's any questions on that, we can take them whenever. But, you know, an audit's more about... More, it's just about numbers, of course, that's what we're talking about today, but it's also about your internal controls and your systems you have in place. And uh, there are three levels of controls that I always talk about. Um, the first is a material weakness in your controls, and you don't have any of those, which means something could be happening that isn't. Significant deficiencies in controls, which could become material weaknesses. And then if you, if you don't address them, we have none of those. And then we also have no management comments, which are, you know, your, your system is really operating well. And we test different things every year. Some of the things we looked at this year, we looked at adjusting journal entries, and we look at that in a different way every year. But we look for rounding and duplicates and unusual items. Uh, we did some purchase and bid testing this year, looking at what you're, what you're spending your bids on, making sure you're complying with some of the laws. We looked at credit cards, uh, travel, not just uh, um, individual travel, but board travel, and as well as um, administration travel. We looked at online cash collections. How are we handling those? Um, and we really looked, spent some time looking at the budget process this year just to see how the budget went and obviously saw the results were awful close to that. Uh, the budget to actual is pretty good. And then we also did some key employee testing this year. Um, well, the superintendent left and we looked at some of the transactions went around that because we, again, when that happens we just always want to take a look at some of that. So those are kind of some of the things we did look at but again we're pleased to report that everything is operating uh, as it should. And the last piece I want to talk about tonight um, is your your compliance in your single audit you get over just over two million dollars in uh, Federal funds and so you're required to have a single audit which includes auditing 13 specific compliance areas within that grant um, About half of your money is in food service And that's the nutrition cluster that we tested and we had no findings in that program So that's good and that's you know that's that's right not just materiality. We talk about that in the audit um, it, Compliance is or it isn't do you have it or don't you? Is it right or is it wrong? It doesn't matter if it's 20 bucks or $100,000. That's, that's where you're testing on that, and that's why it gets kind of frustrating and it's tedious at times. But again, you're doing the things you need to do um, throughout the process. So I guess with that, I guess I'd just like to uh, thank Ms. Ms. Klein, Ms. Lauks for all their help this year. I mean, to get, to get ready for an audit like this, a district this size, that early, there's a lot of work that goes into that, and uh, again, I, I work with some good districts all over the place, and you guys are certainly one of the best of them. Um, are there any questions I can answer for the board? Board's pleasure. I mean, I know it's a lot of riveting stuff. I, I do want to point out this stuff is all on our website, right? They can go out. This, this one may not be yet, but yeah, it will be. So if people in the public would like to look through and look in <coughs> the detailed Absolutely. background, it will be out there for people to look at. Linda, this is a great report card for you and the rest of the administration. So thank you, everybody, for doing such a great job. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll pile on with that comment and ask a question. Um, <coughs> you've had a great history of clean audits, no adjustments, no errors, and it's hats off to Linda and her office. There's everybody else back there. Uh, it, it, there's two things. One, it's well run and well done. and and maybe even more importantly, it has very high integrity. And that's what this audit means to me. And, and uh, you know, if I, I don't lay awake at night worrying about it, and that's tribute to all you guys, I don't have to worry about the honesty and integrity of our people and them doing their jobs right. So thank you all and everybody out in the buildings and everybody for their integrity. That's very important to me as a board member. And this just shines through financially that we have it. So thank you. My question okay. is, <clears throat> Anything of curiosity we should be looking at more from an audit perspective, not a budgeting and prioritization perspective, that's, that's a different decision, but from an audit perspective where you go, you might want to look at this a little more or do this a little better. You know, again, I always look at areas where we are collecting cash away from the mm -hmm. main office 
anytime you're collecting decentralized cash at athletic events, you know, food lunch, food service has gotten, gotten more electronic, but there's still some of that there in the buildings. Activity funds are always worrisome. My auditors always ask me where you want me to look, and that's where I always put them. And that's that, I try to find a different way to look at that. Every time I look at an audit, okay, where can we look that's different and we haven't looked before? Not that we're trying to get anybody, but we're trying to make sure everything is the way it should be. Um, you know, is there money sitting in the in the till all summer and it gets mm -hmm. deposited in September, some of those things. So, again, that's the place I would spend my time. Um, we do have some new standards that are coming out there. The new pension standard is coming out in a couple of years. It's going to affect us. It's going to dramatically change some of the reporting we're going to see. I would be aware of that. MASB has got a lot of information that's been sharing with us as well as MASA. Um, we're going to continue to see more of that. That's something else I'd be aware of because um, it's going to take some challenges to our financial statements when we do have to pick up that liability and obligation. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to let the public know, and it was in our FFO meeting minutes, but I'll amplify on it, is the board, three members of the FFO board committee spend time alone mm -hmm. yes. with Dave, uh, unvarnished by any employee of the district, so that, so that we can uh, probe and ask a lot of these kind of questions, and many of those were asked at that at that session and uh, it just was glowing so it's wonderful thank you mm -hmm. so, yeah. with uh, Dave with uh, you do audits and you work with a lot of other school districts uh, around the state for uh, sure it's basically what you do um, is there anything about the standards of our audit or how we operate financially that wouldn't meet the highest standards of the best school districts, best practices that you've seen? No, I, I would say that you guys do uh, a quite a good job considering the size and how fast you get ready. Um, I put it up against anyone. Okay. Thank you. And how many years have you been doing this type of thing? Years? Oh, yeah, I'm 19. Okay. 19 years. I work with uh, 16 districts all over the state. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Thank you, Dave, very thank you. much. Thank you, and thank you Linda thank you. and crew. We'll move over, in, speaking of Linda, we'll, <laughs> we'll move into finance. All right. And before I get into the gifts, I'd like to acknowledge the business office staff that is here this evening. Uh, we talk about audit uh, as if it's an event, and really it's a year-round activity that really ramps up after we close the fiscal year. Uh, so most of you already know Carol Laux, our business manager. Next to her is Amy Hughes, our payroll manager. <laughs> and next to Amy is Renee Seagreen, one of the office professionals. And together they represent not quite half of the business office. And they are a tremendous team. They keep it going every day, all year. But then when we do get into the final part of the audit season, they know that they work nonstop. It's crazy time uh, in the business office, probably from June right on through the, the completion of the audit, because of course we're doing a new year's budget, mm. we're doing a budget revision for the ending of the year, then we're closing the books, and then we're rolling into audit. And I can't thank them enough for, for their dedication and their willingness to really put forth, particularly at that time. Well, the actress here, I think, speaks to that, and I'd like to hats off, thank you. And actually, it's nice for Renee to be here because Renee is the one who prepares the gift summary that you see every <laughs> two weeks. And so now she can see what happens with all that information that she compiles. Uh, we have two batches of gifts this evening. The first are those that have already been received and processed. They total $11,073.50. They are from the Adams Elementary PTO, the H.H. Dow High Music Boosters, the Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee, the Dow Chemical Community Gives Fund at the Midland Area Community Foundation. Uh, and that was actually five separate gifts. And just as a reminder, the Community Gives uh, Grant Program is one that requires that the grantees perform some degree of community service uh, in exchange for their money. So it's a recognition that they may be able to perform service, they don't have money, and so they pay forward their, their grant that way. Uh, we had an anonymous gift to benefit Siebert Elementary, and then the Dow High School Athletic Booster Club also provided funds. 
Uh, then we have two gifts that total $29,772, and these do require your action this evening. Uh, again, from the Dow High School Athletic Booster Club, providing support for scoreboards for the gym, and the Woodcrest PTO, purchasing some laptop computers for the mobile carts, and if memory serves me correctly, this is the second such gift. Uh, I believe a number of years ago, Woodcrest PTO, or uh, in conjunction with some other grantors, provided the first mobile computers there, and the nice thing is, is that they are now keeping them up to date. So I, I believe this is the second in a cycle from them. But we would request your approval for those two gifts. I move we accept item 5.2. Support. Okay, I have a motion and support. I'll open up to comments and questions. Mike, you seem to have a comment. We need to also accept the audit. Oh, we need to accept the audit. Thank you. I'll come back to that. Okay. Um, any questions or comments on 5.2 gifts? Uh, big thank you. You want to comment that? Uh, I think it's yeah. on everybody's mind. <coughs> Yeah, it's, it's hard to be the chair when you're not allowed to comment first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not special on these well, things. it's just always amazing week after week, week when we come in yes. here, how it just that, continues. That Woodcrest donation is uh, incredible. Thanks for involved parents. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all in favor accepting uh, the gifts in 5.2 say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And uh, we'll revert back and uh, I forgot it was for action. I had it starred. Uh, we need to accept the audit reports uh, to entertain a motion for accepting the audit report. I oh. move we accept audit report um, item number 4.4 .4 on the agenda. Support. Moved by Treasurer Branstad and support by Secretary Kaminsky. Any question or additional comment? Seeing none, I think I can do this with just a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Audit's accepted. Thank you, Mike. Uh, from there, uh, we'll move to human resources and I'll turn it over to Mr. Verlinde. Thank you. We have three retirements. All of them are effective December 20th, 2013. Karen Emmiot, the office professional in the athletics department at HH Dow High School. Beth Hansen in HR, our office professional who does all the sub calling. And Catherine Lopez, bus driver with transportation. We thank all three of them for their service to Middle Public Schools. Thank you. Um, you'll see listed in here correspondence to and from the Board of Education. You'll also see scheduled activities that are coming up. One I'll highlight is that on October 7th, we will have a special meeting of the Board of Education. We'll talk about that here at the end of the agenda concerning the selection of the replacement board member for our current vacancy. I just want to highlight that's a special meeting. Uh, the reason for that being a special meeting I'll highlight now is that by law we have to replace it by 30 days from the resignation and we only had one scheduled meeting between the resignation and then so we had to do a scheduled meeting so uh, from that we'll move into study discussion by members and leads right to that subject uh, we are here to select the committee to select the board thing and for the public and the board has heard this from me I'll, I'll repeat um, Basically, when there's a uh, board member vacancy during a term, uh, by law, the current board, the remaining board, is uh, required to name a replacement within 30 days of the resignation. Uh, our policy calls for us to select a subcommittee to review applications and, uh, and or recruit if there are not sufficient applications uh, to select and recommend, not select, to recommend to the full board candidate or candidates for, uh, for their selection. So we are here tonight to do that part of the process, which is to select a subcommittee to screen candidates and come to the October 7th meeting and make a recommendation to the full board. By our policy, the president of the board is to chair that subcommittee. So we are here to select two other members, don't write my name down, uh, to be on that subcommittee. Uh, Angela has voiced, uh, thank you Angela, it, it, uh, she has really some previous commitments that really she's uh, reluctant to serve on this and thank you for being open and honest about that uh, in the time crunch that we're in. Everybody else is willing to serve. So with that, at this point in time, I'd ask everybody to write two names on a piece of paper. I asked Linda to collect them and she'll tally them quickly and let us know who the subcommittee is going to be.
while she is tallying, um, I will let the public know that we are still more than accepting applications and interest to serve. Um, you can you'll go to our website. You'll see the process for which to do that. It's a pretty simple application looking for some things. Um, in all likelihood, a subcommittee member will likely be contacting you through this process to understand more of your desires and what you bring to the table, at least one. Uh, there might even be an interview. I won't speak to that. It'll be a function of how the committee wants to go forward, but definitely will be a contact. Uh, and uh, so please, if you're interested out there, please sign up and uh, we'll be glad to, to entertain it. Before the 27th. Before the 27th, which is this Friday. That gives us a, uh, a week to, to, a week and a half to do our work in terms of interviewing, et cetera. So please get those applications in by the end of day Friday. Uh, we've received four or five already, and, uh, but I still encourage other people who are interested in our schools to come forward. Linda had to go outside to do that? <laughs> really? <laughs> we can cue the Jeopardy music while we. <laughs> Any other comments by board members on the process as we go forward? While we no, but to? thank you to the four or five who have already mm -hmm. applied. Yeah. Thank you for your interest. Yep, very much so. We'll just patiently wait here. For some reason, we have a tie since this cannot be a majority of the board and except an additional member. We'll go around and re-pull between the three if there are three people tied with any ties. Did you take an extra score? Oh. <laughs> oh, there she is. Ah, we do not have a tie. <laughs> uh, Scott and Lynn have been selected to serve. Um, as chair, I will contact you here probably tomorrow to start talking about how we want to progress through, progress through this and what times we'll meet and that sort of thing. So thank you everyone for volunteering your service. Appreciate it as we go forward. Um, I think that's all I have to do at this point on that subject. With that, I'll turn it over to hearing from board members and I'll start to my right with Lynn. I'd just like to congratulate Lisa and Terry again on their recognition and thank you, Mike, for bringing that recognition to Midland Public Schools. Um, sometimes we just don't take the time to recognize people for what they do every day and, um, and also to those that are nominating. So keep those nominating um, petitions coming in so that we can keep recognizing some great, great employees from Midland Public Schools. And again, I'd like to thank Corey and Justin and Connor. It's so interesting to hear about our different programs. And so often we don't hear about some of the, um, the technical programs. And, and um, used to be called vocational career tech, I guess is the, the word now. So it was, it was neat. I've been into those classrooms and those labs before, but I'd sure like to go back again because it's changed a lot over the years. And uh, it's exciting to know what the uh, prospects are for these students that are deciding to go into welding. And just, I quickly glanced at our upcoming calendar, and I believe before our next meeting, it looks like Midland High is having their play, and Dow High is having their homecoming, and of course there are many other events um, coming up, so I look forward to uh, hopefully participating in some of those. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I really also enjoyed the presentation on welding. The students were great. I really enjoyed their input. That was very nice. I learned a lot from that. There's a lot I didn't know about what's going on just locally. So that's great. Okay, all ready to me. Um, congratulations to our shining stars, the first shining stars of MPS. Thanks, thanks to Mr. Sharo for uh, recognizing that. That really does add a special touch. Uh, but congratulations to Terry and Lisa. Um, Thanks again to our finance team on a, another year of a clean audit. It adds to a long list. And our jobs as board members uh, could be a lot more difficult and complicated if we didn't have such integrity in the finance department. So that's uh, very much appreciated. Um, thanks to our donors, it gives over $40,000. That's, uh, that's really amazing. The list is adding up pretty quick. And it, it makes such a big difference to our school district. And also in our, our uh, board meeting list coming up, 
it's nice to see the collaboration and the coordination amongst the with the ESA and the other school districts coming up and the unity to support going forward so I look forward to that and I it's been a while since we've had a countywide board meeting uh, if that's what if I could call it that but uh, it's really nice uh, the public sees that there's some unity with our uh, on, on a countywide level uh, with what we're doing for education so it's great to see that coming up I'm Angela all right I guess I'll echo everything you all said so I will say something different tonight um, First of all, I had a great opportunity on Saturday. Um, I traveled to Traverse City and it was um, kind of unique. We went there last year with my son's soccer team, but this year they had both JV and varsity teams from Midland High and both JV and varsity teams from Dow High and we played both Traverse City High Schools and we were there for the entire day and it was just great to have both high schools there and going back and forth and it was a really fun event with their two high schools and our two high schools. Um, the second thing last week we went to um, Dow High Parent Night, and last year actually I didn't get to go because it was the night of the Midland Dow soccer game. This year they made sure to not have it the same night. And um, my husband and I just left there just thinking, wow, what passion the teachers all had. And we were so impressed. And then interestingly enough, this weekend I was talking to another family who is actually a school of choicing um, into the Midland Public Schools. And they made the same comment, and they're not even the same grade as my son, just what passion they thought the teachers had. And then last night, we were at a neighborhood barbecue, and there's a family in our neighborhood that um, is from out of the country and who has been here, and they made the same comment, just what passion the teachers had. And I thought, I just wanted to share that because it was just so appreciated, and it just comes through. And, we can sense it and the kids can sense it too. And I just want to thank all of them for just the passion they bring to um, teaching. I really appreciate it. And that is it. Thank you. Um, nothing significant to add other than I am really looking forward to um, replacing our former board member and filling that vacancy and reviewing uh, the applications. And I, and I really can't stress, like you mentioned, Jerry, that, that we really get support from the community and people who are even thinking about it um, submit your application throw your hat in the ring and hopefully we can talk and uh, come up with a really high quality uh, replacement and my comment is going to be again congratulations to Terry and Lisa and again thank you for the clean audit Linda and crew uh, the integrity is so important and that's one thing that we don't even worry about and it's hard to take it just as an assumption but I'm glad it is just an assumption that we operate under. But to Scott's point, folks, you know, if you're sitting there going, oh, gee, I, I really want to get involved in the schools, but I don't know if I really want to do that, or I don't know what it really takes, or gee, you know, whatever, whatever your trepidations are, go ahead and apply, because we're only going to select one, but we're going to be having some activities coming up, and Mike's going to be talking about as we go through future meetings, where we're going to have committees and things of that nature for uh, setting the future direction of the district that we would now have your name on a roster of people to reach out to to participate and so while you may or may not be selected for a board role there will be roles coming up from a volunteer basis uh, that are district-wide that uh, it would be nice to have a list of interested people so we could reach out to them as those do come up into the future so even if you're a little nervous hey the default position is some of these other things and you may be uh, glad to do those as we go forward in the future, too. With that, I will turn it over to Mike. Quick rundown of some of the things that we wrote about on the Friday letter, um, the enhancement millage renewal um, at board meeting where we are. Countywide is October 22nd, so I'll make sure you have that date down, and um, we'll hopefully all the boards agree, and we begin to move towards a renewal piece of that. In the consolidation of service discussion, um, I think, Angela, you brought it up, at, or John might have brought it up. Um, it has g continued to move, so we, at our last meeting we talked a little bit about consolidation of services again. And at this point, Linda's figured into that discussion, we kind of figured that um, it may f center around finance and Linda having the knowledge that she has um, and the history she has. W we're asking her to come to our next meeting to help us in that discussion further. So we're continuing to move forward. Not sure where it's going, but continue to move forward. Um, I had proposed to all of you um, potentially looking at our strategic meeting date of November. We need to talk about that if that works or not. We don't have to do that tonight, but just 
begin to think about it and do we want a facilitator or do you want me to try to attempt to do that? I, uh, we'll have to discuss that as well as we move forward. I invite all of you to go out to our new websites. Our um, technology department has done a wonderful job of making our websites look more uniform um, and fresh and new. And so if you haven't had a chance to go take a look at those as well going forward. We had our first uh, parent information committee. So that, that was a little different for me. I went from uh, eight, nine parents to 20 some parents. Um, and so the size of that was different. And the knowledge of the parent group was qu quite amazing as well. Um, they definitely follow our schools and they definitely look into the research. So that was very good. And we talked a variety of topics and we had um, um, the entire cabinet in there as well as Linda Lipset to talk about the IB PYP program. We talked about NEOLA already, so we won't talk about that. And then um, the last piece for you to know is I will be at the state superintendent's um, training, and so I'll be gone on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday out of the district. But I, as I told you, my phone's always on. Make sure you call if you have questions. That's it. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the order? Seeing none, we stand adjourned.